So let's talk about joints of the shoulder girdle. We just learned all these joint actions and now I'm going to throw a little wrench in our joint actions chart. But joint actions of the shoulder girdle are our cr acromioclavicular joint and our sternoclavicular joint. Now those sound like really huge technical words. But remember when I was talking about anatomy being another language? Those aren't huge technical words. They're actually referring to two specific bones or two specific points within a bone. Your acromioclavicular joint, everybody feel this right here. Feel that shelf where like you don't have any deltoid. Right? It's just above your deltoid. It doesn't matter how big your deltoids are, you still don't have deltoids here. Right? So right here you feel this shelf. Well that's part of your scapula called your acromion process. All right, what's this bone right here called? This is your clavicle, right? Your collarbone is your clavicle. So where your acromion process and your clavicle meet is called your acromioclavicular joint. That's it. It's not so bad, right? It's like when you try to smash words together. You guys ever do that? Like you see a cute couple and you like try to smash the girl's name and the guy's name together. You guys ever done that before? Right? Don't they do that with like stars? Huh? Kim Ye? <laughs> Awful. Terrible. Anyway, um, but you guys get what I'm saying. Like that's all they've done here. Right? Taken a chromion and clavicular and said, you know, it'd be really cute if we called it a chromioclavicular. That's the name of the joint. For short, it's AC joint. Sternoclavicular. What do you think sterno is related to? Sternum. Right? And the clavicle. Feel right here, guys. Do a little of this. Right? And you can kind of feel. There's a joint right here. Right? The funny thing is, is your entire shoulder girdle, including your arm, the only bony attachment to your body is this joint right here. Craziness, huh? That's crazy. All right. So that's your sternoclavicular joint. Now, although those are the two joints of the shoulder girdle, we don't usually refer to motion of these joints. In further classes, you will. Those of you guys going back for your ATC, your DPT, Masters in Kinesiology, you'll start looking at these joints specifically. But for the most part, those two joints help to dictate motion of the scapula, and we refer to motion of the scapula in analysis. Most of the muscles that would even impact these joints are actually attached to the scapula. Does that make sense? So I don't want you guys to think that the scapula is a true joint. Sometimes it's called a sca the scapula thoracic joint. It's not actually a true joint. It's just more convenient to label it that way. Now, unfortunately, you guys just learned all of these joint actions, right? Flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, horizontal abduction, adduction, external internal rotation, lateral flexion. You guys learned all that. The scapula doesn't use those. So we have to learn a separate set of joint actions. You guys ready? They're actually not that bad. Most of them occur in the frontal plane. Does anybody want to take a wild guess why most of them would occur in the frontal plane? Think about how I taught you guys the frontal plane. Huh? The muscle, the way the muscles run, that's part of it. I told you to think about the frontal plane as if you had what? A plane of glass in front of you, right? What's in front of the scapula? The ribs. Is there going to be a whole lot of sagittal plane motion of the scapula with ribs in front of it? No, that kind of makes sense, right? So, our frontal plane joint actions... Our scapular joint actions, rather. Start with That's my scapula. Everybody cool with that? All right. Start with this. If I go up, it's called elevation. Because elevators take you up. I know they can take you down too, but 
Stay with me. So elevation is up. That makes sense, right? That's not too bad. What do you think the opposite of elevation is? Depression. Depression. Right? Don't most people who are depressed kind of have their shoulders down anyway? Right? So we got elevation. We have depression. The next joint actions, you kind of have to think of the scapula as a pinwheel. You guys remember pinwheels? Right? They were these little, there was like a stick. Stick. Right? And then they had these like leafy things. How's my art coming, guys? Is it getting better? Better than the horizon. That kind of looks like a pinwheel, and you'd like blow on it, and it would like spin. You guys know what I'm talking about? Or am I just totally dating myself at this point? Pinwheel. All right. So you have to kind of think of it as a pinwheel. It's a type of rotation, although it's a rotation in the frontal plane this way, known as upward and downward rotation. Now, to decide which way is up and which way is down, we need a point of reference. You guys with me? That point of reference for the scapula is your shoulder socket. This part, where my humerus hangs down, my arm, this is known as your glenoid fossa. When your scapula spins so that we end up with Glenoid fossa pointing upward, which rotation do you think that is? That's upward rotation. Moving back down is going to be downward rotation. When do you think we see these joint actions? Anybody want to take a guess? Frontal plane motions, sure. Give me an exercise. Shoulder press would be what? Upward rotation, all right. When would I see downward rotation? Pull up, right? So if I'm doing a pull up, my scapula is starting to do this, which is that downward rotation. Has everybody got that visualized? All right, let's talk about the last ones. If I drew you from the top, this is your torso. This is your head. Sorry if any of you are offended by this picture. I don't mean anything by it. Um, I'm not that big. Um, it's my torso. So we got torso, head, and then we got scapula. It's a great picture, isn't it? If I do this, right? If I do this thing. So in essence, I go from here to here. Can you guys see how that would be transverse plane movement? Right? Parallel to your table, since this is a top-down view. Now the question is, what do we call that? Yeah, so this is protraction. How many of you guys have seen this guy in the gym? You can now refer to him as Captain Protraction. Right? No? Any of you guys are that nerdy? Any of you guys know what ILS stands for? This is a good one, too. You guys don't know ILS? Imaginary Lat Syndrome? Uh, just a, you guys can throw that around amongst yourselves. All right. So, Protraction. What, what, action, what exercise might we see a little protraction in? Bench press. Sure, we really need protraction in a bench press. In fact, anytime we do pushing motions, we need some protraction. What's the opposite of protraction? Retraction, right? So that's when my scapula actually come closer together and almost touch in the middle. All right, so we got the green is protraction. And we got red, we got retraction. 
All right, so those six joint actions are your big joint actions for the scapula. Those are the ones you will see most often. You guys cool with that? Now, there is two other joint actions for the scapula that you don't run into as often in your textbooks. But if you guys continue with my courses, you're going to have to be aware of, which is there is one set of sagittal plane motions for the scapula. It's called anterior and posterior tipping. So we won't refer to this too much for the rest of the day. You guys can put a little star by this as like bonus material. But if I drew a skeleton from the side, pelvis, lumbar vertebrae, how you guys like my picture? It's good? Scapula sits just like this. Now anterior and posterior tipping is sagittal plane motion, which means it's in which direction? Forward and back, right? So what happens with the scapula is it can kind of crawl over the top of the rib cage, and it can tip anteriorly. All right, so when we refer to this tipping, it's in reference to the top of the scapula. And then what would be the opposite of anterior tipping? Posterior tipping. Exactly. So that would be posterior tipping. When we get into a little bit more complex postural dysfunction and correcting postural dysfunction and improving mechanics of the, of the upper body, this becomes important. Everybody's got those? Anybody want to take a guess when anterior and posterior tipping happens, like some exercises? Shrugs, yeah, you don't really force it in a shrug. It's probably going to be more like an arm motion that anterior and posterior tipping gets included in. Anybody want to guess? Swimming, possibly. Which when during the swim? So if I do this, what's going to happen to my scapula? They're going to post you. Do it. Do it. You can feel your scapula like push into your rib cage, right? They flip this way. So that's posterior tipping. Anterior tipping is yeah. If you did one of these things, like just everybody do this because it looks hot, like Kimye, <laughs> right? Like this is anterior tipping. All right, so everybody's got their scapular motions down. 